Joining us now to give his perspective on the White House agenda is Sean Tima, the spokesperson for Young Americans for Liberty. So, Sean, I first want to get your broad take on the Biden administration. I know that there are a lot of issues that uh, conservatives are worried about during this moment, the COVID spending bill, the future of what takes place next, the border crisis. So I just want to ask you, what's your biggest concern when it comes to the Biden administration? Well, Alex, my biggest concern is that there's too many broken promises to count. And these broken promises are having real consequences on American citizens. From day one, he says, I'm going to back the unions and then cancels the Keystone Pipeline, putting thousands of Americans out of jobs. He says he's going to earn us respect back on the global stage, then goes and bombs Syria and gets us involved in this proxy war that we don't need to be in. He says he's going to be a unifier for a president for all Americans. Then he goes and he puts $2 billion extra into bailing out blue states over red states and calls the governors who are lifting the anti-science COVID restrictions Neanderthal thinking. I mean, come on. At the end of the day, Biden is part of the same Washington machine that's got us almost $30 trillion in debt. He's not some grand unifier, and these broken promises are going to keep adding up. I mean, you're exactly right, because I remember even on the campaign trail, people, uh, at least on the right, asking the questions, what is the Biden foreign policy? We never got the foreign policy debate because of the coronavirus restrictions. And, you know, the media just seems wasn't willing to press Joe Biden on the topics. I mean, it became a running joke that on the campaign trail, he wasn't answering questions. He was in the basement. And it was funny for a little bit, but there are now major concerns. We didn't get answers to that. Do you think a lot of this falls on the media for not pressing the Biden campaign on these issues? I think so. I think the media wanted to paint him again as this grand unifier, as this person who's leading a bold, progressive vision, you know, anything to move on from the past administration. But the guy's been in the Senate, you know, for years, longer than most of us have been alive, right? And this should be a wake up call to progressives, conservatives, everybody alike, is that politicians aren't going to hold themselves accountable to their promises and act in accordance with what's actually good for the American people unless you put maximum pressure on them. And so that's what we got to do. And I think that right now we're really seeing that in the border crisis. I mean, that is something that under President Trump, uh, he was racist if he did it. And uh, if the child detention facilities, children in cages are now migrant uh, overflow facilities, we just kind of see a different change of wording, kind of a different narrative within itself. But do you think that that is an example where we kind of see, I will call it the hypocrisy, if you will, maybe the double standard, just a different media coverage when it comes to the Trump administration as opposed to the Biden administration? I think so. And look, many politicians for years, they want to play hot potato with the border crisis issue. They want to play the blame game. The reality is this runs deeper than any one politician. And let me be clear. I don't care who's in the White House. I don't want to see any child of any nationality in a government cage paid for by my tax dollars. And with thousands of children right now in those government cages on the southern border, Joe Biden is just yet again breaking a progressive promise that he had in his campaign. And I'll give credit for the media for actually covering this. The New York Times reported in the tripling of migrant children in detention centers. Washington Post reported today 4,200 children in these detention centers. That's a record high number. But I think if we want to take a step back and actually address how to solve the border crisis, we need to look at why are so many immigrants coming across to America and why? how can we make this a win-win for people? Right. And so some things we can do because people are coming over for a job. They're coming over for stability. They want to take care of their family. We can't blame them for that. So the U.S. can stop getting involved in regime change in Latin America. That's not putting America first. That's increasing poverty, violence, causing people to flee. Mm -hmm. We can end the failed war on drugs. Right. That's empowering these vicious cartels. And we can take a good hard look at abolishing our welfare state in this country. Prioritize a guest worker program so people can come and work freely and not contribute to this bloated entitlements program that doesn't even work for American citizens. So we can stop the partisan politics about the border, take a step back, look at real solutions, end these government mandated services, coups, and these lockdowns. They're just not getting us any closer to having a functional immigration system. I mean, I can't say it any better than that. I mean, even when you were going through those agenda items, they are not necessarily partisan. I mean, when we're talking about not doing uh, regime change type of efforts in uh, Latin America, South America, let alone the Middle East, I mean, that is something that uh, I think that most people can agree on. And when you're talking about really securing the border, it is not a right wing issue as it's being framed today. I mean, going back to the Clinton administration, there was a surge at the southern border. They talked about border security. The Bush administration talked about security. Uh, Even President Obama, I mean, he was labeled a porter in chief at one point. 
points. I mean, this is not as partisan of an issue as many in the media want to play it up. And I think that's really where this issue lies, because they do want to make it a partisan issue. But Sean Tima, I can't appreciate enough you coming on the program tonight, because this is such an important issue for many people. Thank you. Glad to be here, Alex. And still ahead.